This episode of the Sin Vergüenza podcast is brought to you by Solita's Soap. My name is Jimmy. Jimmy. See me sipping my coffee on the YouTube, though. I'm sipping a fucking iced coffee in my crib at 9:53 p.m. That boy is bugging. Hey, hey, <laughs> Shout out to my girl. She was like, "Do you want a candle for your podcast?" Fucking always horny. Like, you can't wait till after the podcast so we can fuck. Always horny. You want a candle for the... I feel like she's so horny that everywhere we go, she's just like... I'm going to be very soft-spoken on this podcast because, like, I'm not afraid to do my thing in front of her. Like, she's dating me for a reason. She's dating me because she knows what's up. She knows that this comes with the fucking territory. Okay? This extra side of me... The reason why there's comedian in my bio. I could take comedian out of the bio. I could put in extra. That's me. It comes with the territory. Always horny, though. You want a, you want a candle? You want a candle for the podcast? When I'm cutting hair, you want a candle? I'll take a fucking candle. I'll, take a, I'll put a candle on your fucking back. And then, and then we see what happens. Guys, welcome to episode 41. Is Are we on 41 right now? Hold on. Let me see if I got that right. Did Jimbo get get that right for the first time in his life? Uh, he did. He did. I don't know why I did that one. I, I just have shit on my soundboard that like I just play in celebration now. First, it was New York. It'll always be New York, but now it's everything. Oh, very acidic. They told me to fucking try. Um, they told me to try. I hate because I hate the acid and coffee. It fucks with me like it, So I have like this weird fucking. Uh, what do I have? I have uh, an arrhythmia, AFib. And, I'm, and then I also have anxiety, which is the worst combination because like. When I'm having heart palpitations from anxiety, I think I'm having my heart problem. It's never the other way around. It's never like, oh, I'm having the heart problem, so I just think it's anxiety and I calm myself down. No, it's always I'm having anxiety, so I think I'm having the heart problem, and then boom. I'm not having the heart problem. I'm just having anxiety. He told me to try cold brew because it doesn't have, like, it's not uh, very acidic. And... um Yeah, but there's like a shit ton of caffeine in this, so I don't think that's ever happening. Your boy fucking, I'm sorry that the podcast was so late this week. Um, A lot of shit going on. We Gucci, though. We're we're good in the hood. Um, There was a lot of shit going on, and I had to get it together. I had to reset. So your boy got up this morning, and I was like, I'm going to fucking go to the gym. My girl, my girl was like, let's do it. Cardio, like a motherfucker. Then worked and then went to the gym again at night. And then I was amped up and I was like, I'm doing this podcast late this week. Fuck it. And then I had some coffee at night, like a fucking divorced Dominican mother who's going through some shit. My girl had me dying. To start off this podcast, my girl had me dying in the shower because we were showering before everything, before the, the podcast and before she was, like, all horny. And she was like, you want a candle for the pod? Um, I forget what we were joking about in the in the shower. Um, but what the fuck was it? I don't know why we got on the... I don't know why, and, I'm, and, I, don't, and I shouldn't have to explain myself because there's a lot of people out there who do like anal. I have never done it. I don't think I would ever do it. 
um, when you're with someone, however, that you're really into, you get very adventurous. But I think the farthest that I would go is eating ass. But I wouldn't do anal. I know a lot of people look at me and they're like, hmm, eh. I don't know how that makes sense. It's simple. You fucking, you're into a girl enough. Or a guy if you want to lick a guy's ass. I said that on fucking the last podcast with Fatty. Bouncing off that. My boy came on here. Very amazing podcast. If you haven't watched it, go check it out. It's definitely like five out of five. One of my favorite guests by far. And I'm so happy to know that he's literally my next door neighbor. Like probably like three houses between us, honestly. But he fucking told me like he was telling me that like, yeah, have your girl eat your ass. I don't know if I would go that far. Like. I feel like guys can only eat a girl's ass when she's out of the shower and all that. Because a girl, you know, she could just take a shit or just fucking finish squatting like 4,000 at the gym and then come back and like you're just licking, you know. Like imagine, I I have a lot of ass problems in the heat and in sweat and stuff. So imagine a girl's, right? But a guy's ass, all of that plus mad hair, it's just not going to happen. And uh, I just realized my girl's Armenian, so there's really no difference in the whole hair thing, honestly. So? (sighs) Anyway, we were talking, we were joking about anal, and I said, oh, I probably joked, like, oh, she was like, I thought you were, I said something, and then she was like, oh, I thought you said, this is not what I said, she goes, I thought you said you were going to jam your fucking dick in my ass. And I was like, no, but I thought about it one night when we was getting. And then I was like, nah, not going to do it. And then she said, she was dead ass when she said this. Just make sure I poop first. Mind you. We it would be both of us trying this out, right? Wait until I poop first. What do you know that I don't? And then it occurred to me. All this time that I've said I would never try anal, I always said I would be so paranoid about Entering a place, <laughs> entering a place that, that when I, all right, I'm very immature, right? In a way, right? So when I picture anal, <clears throat> when I picture me doing anal, I picture like a cartoon, right? Imagine one of those like Mucinex commercials, right? Where they show you the inside of the lung and the Mucinex niggas, like the big glob green fucking flubber looking niggas are just sitting down and they're just chilling and they're like they're like oh what's up they're like smoking a cigarette or doing some fucking nasty shit they're just chilling in the lung right i picture something like a mucinex commercial i picture my dick it looks like the alaskan bullworm from spongebob and it's got so it's got like the fucking face and the eyes and everything and my dick just goes inside of, of of an anus right and it and it gets past the hole and it gets in there and then my dick's just like it, it grows an arm and it waves hello and then zoom out the camera frame and it's just like turds sitting there waiting. And they're like, oh, what's up? Welcome to the party. That's what I picture when I picture anal. And that's why I'm a little eh about trying it. So my girl said that to me and I drew a blank and then I didn't even think about it. My fucking number one reason for not like... Just being iffy about anal is that. It's just like I picture that Mucinex style commercial, but with turds chilling, playing dominoes in my Dominican and Puerto Rican asshole. Why am I talking about mine? All right. Now we're all over the place. Okay. It's just an example, right? Like if it was a fucking, you know, an inside of an anus, whoever is anus it is, if it's a Dominican girl or whatever, they're playing dominoes in there, whatever. Like I just, I couldn't do it, honestly. So, we're past the why Jimbo doesn't like anal thing, and if you guys have that answer for me, the whole, like, it, it, do you really have to wait until a girl poops or not? 
please let me know because I'm curious about that one actually. <laughs> um, last week's episode of Sin Vergüenza was amazing. It was with Fatty Mayonnaise. I'm going to try to, if I don't, it's whatever. I'm just a very like OCD sometimes. So it's like, I'm going to try to fucking have somebody on every two weeks. Sometimes it'll just happen where it's every week or yeah, I don't have to, whatever. It'll happen when it happens. I'm going to try to have every two weeks. Next week, I'm going to have someone on. Don't know who it is yet. Have a couple of options. Have a list. But last week's with Fatty Mayonnaise was dope. I had a lot of people hitting me up asking me about the motherfucking uh, the jizzing myself story. Yo, there was so much more to that story. So for those who didn't hear the podcast last week, me and Fatty were talking about the fact that we literally, until we lost our virginities, just dry humped whoever we had relations with. Right? And... Fatty gave his bit. I gave mine. My whole shit is like when I was fucking. I lost my virginity when I was like very, very proud of it. Like very like proud of the fact that I wasn't thotting around with the rest of the 14, 15 year olds around me, 16 year olds around me, even 13. I remember being 13 and hearing like other 13 year olds or 14 year olds being like, yeah, man, yo, you, you. Yeah, like they're fucking talking. Like you could tell they all just like had sex. Some of them might be lying. I don't know. But like they're just getting very descriptive. And they're like, yo, Jay, you ever eat pussy, bro? Yeah, sure. How about jerk? I never lied about anything. I will, however, admit the fact that one time in middle school, this dude was like a super freak. You could tell. You guys ever have that dude in school, in middle school or, like, fucking high school who, like, you could tell he just lost his virginity and he's just... His life is literally, like, that song, I Just Had Sex by Lonely Island. Love them, by the way. Huge inspiration to, like, my... Uh, the the music part of, of the comedy thing that I do. Um, They just, like, they have to shout it to the rooftops. And this kid, like, every week, it was just, like, I remember... Vividly, he had this girl that he was like super, super PDA with. I fucking cannot stand that shit. And uh, he, he he came in one day, and every day he's talking about some shit, and 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 like he'll just be like, "Yo," he'll put you on the spot and ask you a question. So I'm mind you, I'm like in middle school, so I'm like fucking thirteen or whatever. Was it middle school? It was middle school. I was thirteen. We're getting ready to go to high school. And he just looks at me and he's like, he's asking everybody in the class and he's like, how about you? Would you rather jerk off with baby oil or ice? That was the question. I remember some shit like that because I remember weird shit like that. So he's like, would you rather jerk off with, yo, Jay, would you rather, how about you? Would you rather jerk off with baby oil or ice? And I literally just like kind of like felt the fucking question out and felt what answer he was leaning more towards. And I was just like, baby oil, bruh. And he was like, yeah, bro, right? Because baby oil, you know, when you jerk off and use baby oil, it feels nice and, and moist, and it's not, it's not icy, and it feels warm like a vagina. And I'm just sitting there like, yeah, bro, I totally know what a, a vagina feels. I feel you. I literally was just like, yep. And I had no idea what he was talking about because guess what? At 13, your boy wasn't even jerking off yet. Okay? I'll tell you what the fuck happened. To me, I was a very, very late bloomer. I have fucking stand up on stand up on stand up material written about this shit because it's some of the most funniest shit in my life. I could literally I could literally do an hour set of how much how funny it was that I was a late blooming uh, fucking teenager, preteen to teenager. I for starters, I lost my virginity when I was like 17 and I fucking to, to answer the question that you guys probably have from, from what I just said, I probably started jerking my dick when I was like 14, 15, maybe 15, maybe even 15. Until then, I had no idea what it meant. So this dude, I'm just like a fuck. The thing with me was, bro, like, I'm not going to lie. Like, I was like cool in school in a sense that like to, 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 um, to visualize it for you. Um, 
I was cool in a sense that I was that kid who was. Uh, my dad was like a popular like neighborhood barber, right? Um, I I I was that kid who could draw. Like, yo, look what this look what this nigga's drawing today. Yo, draw me this, draw me that. Girls are like, draw me this. You fucking drawing Batman? What? Let me rub you down. I don't even know how you can rub me down. What the fuck's that even mean? So. I was cool in that sense. Like I had the comics in my in my book bag. I had the fucking uh I was skateboarding for a little bit. I fucking drew like I, I but I was also like like I was all over the place. Like I wasn't I wasn't I'm the way I am now. Like right now like I'm I'm very like neutral. Like I'm cool with everybody. When my my fucking boss tells me at the barbershop, he's like, "Yo, like you have all these different um friend groups and like people you're cool with and I'm like yeah because I don't I've never been one to like unless, obviously like I'm not like that with relationships my girl's listening to this she's like is this nigga admitting he's a hoe right now no what I'm saying is when it comes to friends and friends groups and shit I've been like that through school and I'm like that now like I'm not and even with like the, pol- the politics stuff I'm like yo fuck these guys and fuck these guys I believe in what I believe in and that's it so I had friends who were like fucking Gangbangers, drug dealers, fucking nerds, like all over the place. So I was cool in that sense. Aside from that, on the low, I was a little bit of a nerd. And on the other low, kind of high key, I was a softy. So in my head, I was just kind of like, I'm gonna wait. Like all this sex shit and everybody's talking about, I'm kind of scared. I was a nervous little pussy when I was in fucking uh, school, like, growing up. Like, my anxiety was, I was discovering that I was having anxiety. So I was, like, with that said, I was scared of, like, this whole sex thing. Because I, I would hear stories about, guy, like, savage guys being like, yeah, bro, this shit's crazy. And, I, and then I would hear um, girls and, and some guys who were soft, but some girls, I would hear everybody out. Um, I would hear I would hear hear girls talk about like how you know you get attached to the person and things like that, so my anxiety kicks in and my soft shit kicks in, and as a as a fucking thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen year old, I was like, you know what, like this shit's a little scary to me. I have no idea what could happen. My fucking foreskin could peel right off when I go in for the first time. I heard girls' cherries pop. I heard you fall in love. These motherfuckers are acting like savages over it, but they're also, I'm also realizing that they're talking like they're addicted. I'm just going to hold off until 13, 14 year old me until I find the one. Okay. Get the fuck out of here. Little did I know. And sex means a lot to me. It does. Like, it, you know. It, <sighs> sips coffee. Unless, you know, aside from, like, the whole phases we have, which is okay to have, like, you know, after we go through breakups and stuff like that, sex means a lot to me. So, I st- that, the, the, thought that I, the, the, the thought process that I had held true, but I also shouldn't have taken it too seriously. All of that shit aside, my, the point that I was trying to get at was, I was basically, until the one, quote-unquote, the one came around, I was just... I was making out with girls, nothing else, nothing else. Making out with girls, dry humping while making out, right? Because we were, I'm assuming we're all like in the same age group. We're just like, you know what? I want to do this, but I'm going to keep my clothes on and just kind of like thrust against you while our fucking denim or whatever we're wearing just rubs together so hard that it could cause a fire so hard that your boy ejaculated on himself. And it happened a couple times, right? And I was like, yo, this happens a lot. And it was one of those things, like, like once it happened, it, it like, ruined whatever the fuck. If, if I was on a date or a fucking whatever, I would be like, all right, got to go home now. Peace out. And I would just be like, what the fuck is happening? And then, and then I would, like, put together, like, oh, this whole jerking off thing until you whatever. Oh, that's what this person was talking about. All right, so I have to do this. And then I realized, and then I started jerking off or whatever. One time, though, the time that I was talking about with Fatty, oh, man, we were at a fucking movie theater, me and this girl. 
and her, like I said on the last podcast, I was waiting for her mom. We were waiting for her mom to pick us up. And instant karma. For some reason, her mom couldn't pick us up. We had to walk back. It was such a long walk. And I feel like the karma happened because we were in the back of the movie theater. Our friends were, like, w- coming out of the bathroom or whatever. We, while they were coming out of the bathroom, we were fucking making out, dry humping in the back of the movie theater. Your boy was wearing basketball shorts. She was wearing shorts with, like, sandals. Fucking jizzed myself. But the jizz creeps down my basketball shorts and literally drops on her foot. (laughs) What a time. So, that shit was hilarious. Looking back, in the moment, bro, in the moment, I was like, fuck. Because then it, it, then it became an ongoing joke that I didn't know about till days later. The girl told everybody in the group because she knew. She didn't tell me. I thought I just jizzed myself and it went nowhere. Apparently, it went on her foot. I find out days later because she told everyone in that group. And then that's it. We just splitsville. Like they would, after that, it was de- def- there was a definite breakup because I was young. And I was like, why would you tell people that? That's not funny. And blah, 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 blah. Like, I have a problem. I was just a little soft ass nigga who felt everything. And part of that was clearly like the dry humping was intense to me. And I fucking just myself like whatever. <sighs> like, I, w- I guess I w- aside from being a cool kid, I was also a weird kid. I don't fucking know, man. But apparently, like it happened. It's not that uncommon because Fatty was going through it, too. He told me he didn't just himself, but whatever. How's everyone doing? I'm going to check in on y'all on, on, uh, during a rough week for me. So if you're having a rough week, bro, welcome. This is your time to just sit back. I know you don't give a fuck about. I know that my life is not important. But if there's shit in my life that I can laugh at that other people possibly are going through or also went through. Like if you just yourself when you were fucking a young little boy who was fucking, you know, afraid to lose his virginity or whatever. Like shout out to you. Hey, hey. If you were somehow like a late blooming female, I don't know what what do what do late blooming females do when they when they like what's the equivalent of a late blooming female jizzing herself? I don't know. Getting well, moist. Yeah. Shout out to you guys, because if a guy fucking gets quote unquote moist in his pants, that shit shows. I had to fucking play it off like I spilled Sprite on my fucking basketball shorts that night. But point is, if you're having a rough week, welcome to episode 41. This is the place to fucking just laugh off all of your shit. And if your current shit is too deep to laugh at, then laugh at other shit. Like something stupid you did in the past, like jizzing yourself. And I just fucked up the soundboard press, but it's all good, bro. Get the fuck out of here. It's all good. So I watched Tenet last night and that movie, like I didn't think it for those who don't know, I'm a huge Chris Nolan fan. Like I fucking love that dude. If like I could suck his dick, I probably would. Honestly, I'm not serious about that. If you're going to hit me with the A.O. pause shit, then whatever. Do what you got to do. I'm here. You know my address. If you don't know my address, ask Fatty Man. He said, give it to you. I just said what I said, but I'll still fuck you up. I'm exaggerating. I'm dramatic. Chris Nolan is just that nigga. And he makes trippy ass movies and he's my favorite director. And Tenet was insane. I'm not a fucking movie review podcast. I'm not a fucking, you know, movie breakdown podcast. I'm not about to do that. But I have a love for movies. I said all the time, if I could use comedy as a stepping stone to get into movies, whether it be acting, writing, producing, directing, I think I said that, whatever, I would. So I have a love for movies, and I have a love for Chris Nolan. And this movie, Tenet, bro, first of all, it's like the first big movie that is out in cinema right now. Because right now, movie theaters, which I think is dope, are playing only, like, the the oldies for five bucks. And... That's starting to come to a close because all these new movies are coming out. They're starting to finally be released. Fuck COVID. 
Um, and Tenet was the first big one. And holy shit, this nigga blows your mind every time. Like, I don't know. This, this nigga must do everything under the sun before he, like, gets in the writer's room or whatever and just starts, like, coming up with this shit because it's insane. It's like an adult Back to the Future on steroids, and that's all I have to say. Um, Denzel Washington son is in it David Washington John David Washington or David John I butcher everybody's name he's the lead he's phenomenal he's also in Black Klansman and Robert Pattinson is in it and he's gonna be playing the Batman and now the Batman has COVID he got fucking tested for COVID um, and he and it's positive and like that sucks but <sighs> Tenet is awesome. If you're having a bad week, go check it out. It's out in theaters this weekend. I'm over here promoting it like I fucking work for Chris Nolan, and I probably do, and that's all good. Because that's my nigga. It's free promo for everybody. It don't have to be just Solita, bro. It could be everybody. People I don't even know personally. So, and I don't know how all the, all the other states are going, but Rhode Island just announced that, like, kids go back to school on, like, September 14th, I think it is. And how the fuck is that going to go down? I mean, you have the option to do the whole um, online learning shit. And my fucking MacBook's being annoying, and it's about to die, and it's all good because everything's off the cuff anyways. Back to school for me was like already like just so like ugh. I was a very anti-social. So I wouldn't say anti-social. I was very social, but it was also like very hard to be social with discovering that I was having anxiety going to school. But that was already hard as it was. So you're gonna tell me you're gonna throw COVID in that bitch? You gotta wear a mask to school. You gotta fucking worry about catching this shit. I'll tell you one thing, kids are not going to be thoughts in school anymore with this COVID shit. One could hope. But they have the options to do the online learning or go back to school. Me, personally, I am going to send my little fucker right back to school because guess what? If I'm a parent and my kids go to school and, like, that's the only freedom I have, then guess what? Once school is open, you're back to school. And the whole shit with this COVID thing, I already told you guys my belief, like, I believe in it. I think it's real. But I think the mask thing is just... And this mask thing... They're either going to realize that, like... Okay, we're gonna we're just going to dead that. Or we're going to have to wear it for the rest of our lives. Because COVID's going to be around forever, bro. It's a virus. It's... It's a virus. It's not... Like, the flu wasn't cured. They gave a vac... They have vaccine for it, and that's it. And now they're fucking doing this whole thing where for the flu, and I think it's in mass they passed this, where the flu is the flu shot is going to be required for kids to go back to school. And you already know that all the anti-vaxxing fucking parents are like, well, I guess my kid's not going back to school. Johnny, you're getting your GED, fuck school. And Johnny's going to be like, all right, I'll get my GED. And he's going to be a fucking drug dealer. And that's it. That's how, that's how fucking life's going to go now. Everybody's going to sell drugs because fucking anti-vaxxing moms are like, nope, you're not doing it. I don't understand. Like, I respect it, but I don't understand the anti-vax, uh, the anti-vaxxers, honestly. But that's part of the whole, like, line of, like, Republicans who, like, don't believe in science because they rather believe in religion and all this shit. Like, that's the dumbest shit I've ever fucking seen heard of in my goddamn life bro you're a republican so so let's go down the list this is why i hate both sides because it's like if you're one thing you have to be the other thing and you have to believe in the other thing and you have to believe in the, believe in the other thing and this is the part of my podcast where i go from silly to deep and then i'll go back to silly in a couple minutes if i don't whatever like just fucking tune in learn some shit be part of a deep discussion Listen, I don't know what you guys do when you listen to me. Do you just listen and be like, oh, yo, facts, Jimmy. Oh, yeah, Jimmy, you kind of sound stupid right now. Maybe I won't tune in next week, but then maybe you'll post a fucking funny video, and then maybe I'll tune in again. Wow, this coffee is getting to me. Dominicans, Boricuas. 
Example. Republicans have to be Christians. Also, when you're a Christian, you just believe in fucking God. And when you believe in God, you don't believe in science. You don't believe in fucking space travel. You don't believe in life on other planets. You don't believe in starting life on other planets. You don't believe in fucking uh, anything that has to do with science. So you don't believe in climate change. So you don't believe in uh, vaccines that doctors made. Scientists and doctors made and created to protect kids and, and just people in general from different viruses and diseases and shit. Came from do- those doctors and scientists who were created by who else? Your Lord and Savior. It's almost like you can believe in both. I don't understand. That's the shit that I don't get. How how that happens. How Repub- like, And I'm not fucking attacking Republicans. Yo, listen to this podcast. If you're a Republican or a Democrat, take this personal. Fuck you both. You could have your own opinion, so I don't actually mean the big fuck you both. You could have your opinion 100%. This, what I'm saying is, because I know a lot of Republicans and, and people who who favor one or favor the other, they just register as one because that's their opinions lie with one side a little more. That's fine. I'm talking about the extreme ones, right? The ones that I fucking hate who are like, they, they live and die by what they register to because that's what they register as and that's it. Bro, one thing I don't understand on the Republican side is this whole we don't believe in science thing. So you mean to tell me that, for example... With the anti-vaccine shit. I'll give another example. Elon Musk and these and and just people in in uh in with, with uh I think it might be like astrophysics. There's there's a there's a very there's a large group of scientists who believe that we can live on Mars one day. It's a little out there, yeah. I'm not going to lie. But you're completely denying it, even though they're, like, doing shit that that, uh, proves that we can go do there, we can get it done or whatever. You're just, like, anti that because, like, it's not in the Bible or whatever. Like, bro, you're telling me you believe in a God, right? You're telling me that you believe in an all-powerful God, an all-powerful, like, mighty God, right? You're going to tell me that that God, creator of all life, couldn't have created... We're all created differently, right? We're all the same, but we're all, we're, we're all created... We all end up being... Whatever you want to believe in, we all, we're all created with dreams and goals and aspirations and abilities. Not like X-Men and mutants, but Abilities to do things, make people laugh, create medicine, make people feel better, uh, be porn stars, whatever the fuck you, you're, you're doing that you're whatever you end up finding out your purpose in life is. I'm not 100 percent a believer in like. We all have a. Sometimes I believe in it, sometimes I don't this whole like we're destined to do all I'm saying is, when you're born, you're definitely born with some type of gift, some underlying gift that ends up branching out into something th- more where you find out what you can do with that gift as a career or whatever. So you're going to tell me you don't believe in science as if all of these different scientists, whether it's like people in who, who want to go to space, people who figured out climate change is, is a thing, people who create vaccines to fucking make your kid feel better. Instead, you're going to be like, nah, fuck the vaccine. I'd rather pray. Hello? Get the fuck out of here. Nigga, <clears throat> you ever watch Bruce Almighty? God's too fucking busy to answer all those prayers, bro. If Jim Carrey couldn't do it, and if Morgan Freeman, who's a boss, was struggling doing it, then God's like, you know what? I'm going to fucking... Move these emails over. I'm thinking about the part from Bruce Almighty. I'm going to move these emails over, and I'm just going to create people who can fucking 
do vaccines? Because I can't answer all these prayers and make these kids with COVID feel better. I'm just going to make people, create people who make vaccines. It's almost like you can believe in both. Wow. My, fo- my computer is on 1%. I have like, you know, how, you know how I do it, man. There's bullet points. I just go off that and that's it. That's it. So my daughter turned three last week and we took her to Boston. I just jumped off the school shit. The point is the, 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 the point that I was trying to make with the school shit. I think I made my point. Vaccinate your fucking kids. If you don't want to send them to school, fine. That's also your right. I will say that um, that whole you have to vaccinate your kid. Because I'm also I'm so neutral. It's fucking annoying. I will say that as much as I believe in the vaccine shit and as, and as much as I believe that people who don't vaccinate their kids are fucking idiots. It's also their opinion and it's their religious reason, um, which I think is dumb, stupid opinion. Um, I think it, it's a little hardcore to be like, you can't go back to school without a flu shot. Maybe they're preparing people for the COVID. I think you, I think you should have a COVID fucking vaccine before you go back to school. But again, I also believe I'm not one of those people who think like, oh, COVID's just another. In a way, COVID is like a flu. It's deadly. Some might argue that f- the flu is, is deadlier than COVID, but that's a fucking argument for another day. I'm not going to fucking get into this whole debate because there's just way too much of it at the barbershop, everywhere I go, and it's sickening. The point is, if you're going to go back to school, respect it. Get the shot if they have a COVID shot. That shit's going to be around forever. So this COVID thing is going to be this COVID fucking uh, vaccine whenever it does drop. I say drop like it's a mixtape. It's going to. It's going to be the new norm, bro. It's going to be the new flu shot. You got to get it. And it's a to go back to school and you got to get it. And sooner or later, it'll probably it'll probably start off as a mandatory thing and then it'll be a choice and whatever. In more important news, my daughter turned three last week. We went to Boston. Very, like, I got to drink some water because I'm having anxiety. Coffee at fucking 9 9 a.m. 9 p.m. after the gym is nuts. Never going to sleep now. My girl's drinking coffee in the other room because she's horny. She fucking lit this mango, mango Mai Tai candle next to me and was... Like, didn't say it, but that pretty much meant, like, nigga, you better get in the mood to fucking, uh, from the top, uh, whatever, that's a, that's a whap. She's in a very whap mood right now, so, like, candles on my podcast. Get the fuck out of here, bro. Get the fuck out of here! Ain't no fucking, ain't no fucking that until this shit's over. This fucking, this. That's enough for that. I'm going to get flagged because I use like more than whatever the time is with these sound bits. She turned three. We went to Boston. It was very like uh, COVID didn't exist over there. Almost. And it was a little weird, but she had fun. The fun, the, 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 the funny part of that. I'm the funny part about this that I'm getting to is I had for the parents out there, like the older ones and even the newer ones, I had no fucking clue that the terrible twos get advanced into the threes. They like evolve like Pokemon, bro. So she like Pokemon when they evolve, it's like they learn different abilities and her ability right now. And I had zero clue that this was a fucking like this would this this would come this early right my daughter is giving her mom a hard time and it's insane and it's like she she does it and like she knows that it's like this is my mom i'm supposed to be for my mom i'm supposed to fucking have the whole like mother daughter be for my mom so i'm going to start now I had the terrible twos. 
I kicked and I screamed, and I'm a brat here and there. But, and I'm not saying she's not a brat towards me, but it's, like, extra with her mom. Extra. Like, the funniest shit happened, and I didn't think this would happen until she turned, like, 12 or 13. That whole, like, yo, I'm going to send you to your father's house. Bro, what is going on? What's going on? And I didn't realize it until I would hear about it. And I didn't realize it until we went to Boston. My daughter's here with me. And this I'm not taking away anything from my daughter's mother. She's a, she's a great parent. Um, she, she handles shit the way I handle it. She handles shit the way I handle it. And she handles shit sometimes in ways that I can't. Because this is my shit. We were talking about this shit in the barbershop. Um, I'm the only dude in the shop with a, with a daughter. Every, every, these, all these other guys have fucking sons, right? There's three other ones with kids, and they all have sons. <clears throat> they're all very rough on their sons. Not rough like they're bad parents, but like if they got to give them a little spanking on the booty or get really firm, like really firm on them, like really like, Really like Come here little nigga Like this nigga Jose that I work with He laughed at me so hard Because like my my way of calling Alexandria When she's fucking up I literally I just give her a look And it works sometimes And sometimes she's like <laughs> Nigga you ain't doing shit to me Get the fuck out of here And I just say they're like All right, You're right But they look, they look at their sons And they're like Nigga get the fuck over here like, they look like fucking pit bulls, like big bullies, big bully pits. And they're just like, get the fuck over here. And when I look at Alexandria, I literally, if she's, she could be fucking, like, climbing up the Empire State Building, throwing grenades down like a fucking, like a, like a full-blown mutated King Kong. And I would look at her up there and I'd be like, Alexandria. And that's my way of fucking disciplining her. Sometimes, I, you know, I'll, I'll fucking grab her little arm and be like, let's go. And then, and then she'll be shocked. That's the funniest part. It's like, I got to be a fucking asshole. A little bit of an asshole. A percentage of an asshole. And I got to fucking yank her by the arm and be like, yo, let's go. Not in a, an abusive way, because like I'm telling you right now, I am a pussy when it comes to my daughter. And that's fine. That's what her mom is there for. Our mom tells me, so she's like, oh, yo, yeah, I fucking, yep, yep. I put her in timeout. I put her in timeout, too. But her mom's like, get the fuck in that corner. Or she'll, like, give her a spanking on the booty or show the funniest shit last week. FaceTimes me, calls me, texts me. She's like, yo, she's bugging out right now. I just fucking told her that if she keeps bugging out, I'm sending her to her dad's house. And I was like, bruh, we're there now? I thought this shit was going to come. My mom and my sister just went through this shit recently. My sister's fucking 16. My daughter's doing this shit now. This kid's advanced. My kid is advanced. You can't tell me jack shit. She's advanced, bro. You know, the other day, she fucking got mad at me because I told her to hurry the fuck up. I was like, yo, hurry the fuck up. You're taking too long. Because I'm late everywhere. When you have a toddler, you're late to Everything. Everything. My boss doesn't understand it. People who invite me out to places when I have my kid doing Nigga, when I tell you fucking, when you tell me like, oh, be here for 11 or I tell you I'll be there for 11, expect me there at 1201 when I have my kid. Because that's what having a toddler is like. You you late every, so I'm literally looking at her and I'm like, get the fuck up. Let's go hurry up. She goes, Oh, yo, advanced, bitten by a radioactive fucking brat somewhere. And she she got bit by a radioactive Veruca Salt. The little fucking, the little bitch from Willy Wonka. The little bitch from Willy Wonka. That's who she, she got bit by a radioactive Veruca Salt. The little bitch from Willy Wonka. That's how she acts sometimes. And she's not spoiled. She is. But now we got to start taking shit away. Now we got to start being like, all right, you want to be a little fuck? 
Guess what? No Dave and Busters tonight. Guess what? No fucking E.T. for the billionth time because you're destroying my favorite movie. But guess what? Me and my girl watched George of the Jungle the other night. I destroyed that movie like fucking crazy. Like you wouldn't believe. That's what kids do. But kids don't fucking start fighting with their mothers specifically and giving their mothers a hard time specifically. You know why my daughter does it? Because she's advanced. My daughter's a fucking super baby, dude. But she has to be stopped. She has to be stopped. No one toddler can have all that power. I think Kanye West said that. So, Jim Ye West. Oh my god, yeah, something needs to be done, man. We were in Boston and I I didn't I didn't believe it until I saw it for myself. I kinda like looked at her and I looked at I looked at her mother and I was like, yo, Lex, no offense, but like she doesn't act like this with me. What the fuck's going on? She's like, I don't know. I didn't know this happened this fast. I just said me neither. I pictured this happening when she was like fucking fifteen or sixteen doing that fucking rebellious shit. You wanna know what mom did? And I'll probably just be fucking sitting back drinking a beer like, I don't care, but go ahead, tell me. She fucking took away my Xbox 720 and my fucking OnlyFans. Why the fuck do you have an OnlyFans? What was in my notes? I'm pretty sure I could do a smooth segue into Only... Yeah, my fucking laptop died. That Bella Thorne bitch came up, and I can't figure out how much from my laptop... But she came up big and shitted on the, all the OnlyFans people. And it fucking sucks. I don't hate on OnlyFans. I've said it publicly. Mad times, bro. Mad times. Guess what? You got an OnlyFans? You make money off OnlyFans? Awesome. What I have a problem with is the fact that niggas can't be sex workers. That sucks. You want to know why? Because dicks are ugly. Dicks are ugly. If dicks were cute, niggas would have OnlyFans and we would be able to make money. Women have like all these fucking bits and goodies that look good. And that horny fucking jack offs will pay for online. Men don't have bits and goods with an S at the end. We have one private part, and that one private part is a... They come in all shapes and sizes, just like boobs and asses and whatever, but the thing is, you've never looked at asses or boobs, maybe boobs, I don't know. You've never looked at these body parts, and you never, like, no one ever said, that's an ugly booty. At best, at, at, at worst case scenario, someone will say, that's a flat booty or you got no ass. No one will ever look at a booty and say, that's an ugly booty. No one will ever look at boobs. They might, at, at worst case scenario, somebody will say, oh, those are weird looking boobs. But they'll never say those are some shitty looking boobs. Correct me if I'm wrong. We've got, we don't have multiple choices. We've got one dangling fucking this just dangling little fucking worm thing hanging between our legs that have that that come with a set of wrinkly fucking balls just also hanging there in the wind with some pubes on the side and it just grows into this like big veiny brown Hulk looking thing and it just it's not worth five ninety nine a week. I don't hate on OnlyFans. I just want a piece of the pie. But guess what? My girl's not on OnlyFans. I don't have to worry about that shit. So therefore there is no piece of the pie that I want or need. But shout out to the sex workers. You know what it's a big fuck you to? Bella Thorne. I'm not going to call her a genius. I'm not going to call her fucking... I'm not going to celebrate her come up. That fucking blows. This bitch is a... What was she on? Disney Channel? 
and that's that's it right there. You are on Disney. You are paid. You're on fucking Instagram, and you're Insta famous, and you 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 got it made already. It looks like. And you're gonna tell me you needed to go on OnlyFans and fucking also brag? I think she made like twenty million or some shit, and she had to brag about it. That sucks. And I, I I'll talk about it with uh, one of my guests coming up. I, it might be next week. It may not be. I'll let you know. But when she does come on, we'll talk about it. But um, yeah, I heard she did some shit that fucking. I wish my laptop didn't die, but that's my fault for not being prepared. She. Fucked with how OnlyFans works now because of her little finesse move. And now, so people used to get, I think people used to get paid weekly and now they get paid monthly. Which sucks. Or whatever. Point is, fuck Bella Thorne. I'm on the fuck Bella Thorne wave and, uh, yeah. Get the fuck out of here! I wanted to end the podcast with something silly. This whole Ali's Donuts thing, it's always been Ali's, fuck Ali's Donuts to me, first of all. I, this whole, so this is my thing, right? I'm not saying fuck, I'm not saying fuck the police. I wouldn't say fuck the police because that's not what I actually believe. I'm not saying not fuck the police. Again, this is me being annoying and neutral. Everybody, there's, some, there's certain people who are like, oh, yeah, he's cool, whatever. There's other people who are like, nigga, why can't you just pick a side? I don't have to. I'm just stating the facts. And in the midst of police brutality, in the midst of police brutality, I'm not going to be that asshole. I'm, I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right now. And this is not just because I have friends who are cops. I'm also a minority. I'm also on the other side. I'm not. But with that said, I'm not going to be the asshole in the midst of police brutality. Who says not all cops are bad because that's not the argument. The argument is there are bad cops. We shouldn't waste our breath saying not all cops are bad. We know not all cops are bad. We just know that there are shitty cops. And the reason why we have to keep reminding you that there are shitty cops is because nothing's done about it on the cop end. Now, with that said, (laughs) cancel culture does absolutely nothing for anyone or to anyone this is why I'm saying it's always been fuck Ali's Donuts for you sheeple sheep and people if you didn't know what that meant I just made it somebody else did it before whatever I don't mean to sound all woke I hate woke people let me just fucking take a step back and get the fuck out of here back to the fucking back to the matter at hand it's always been fuck Ali's this motherfucker who's always on the... He always looks like he's on something. He's a very hyped up dude who fucking runs a donut shop in South County. Donuts? They're all right. I prefer PVD. But that's a conversation for another time. Maybe on a fatty fucking podcast, I'll convince him to do some donuts of the city. But it'll be fuck alleys and it was always fuck alleys. You know why? Because cancel culture does nothing to anyone. Do you guys seriously sit there and think, hey, you know what we're going to do? This person said this. This person's doing that. These groups of people, fuck them. We're going to cancel this and cancel that and cancel this and cancel that. And guess what? They're fucking done. Wrong. You guys try to cancel Starbucks, it's still standing. You guys try to cancel celebrities and shit, the movies are still out there. 
You guys try to fucking cancel. Um, you guys just try to cancel everything over everything. Cancel culture does absolutely nothing. And what and what people fail to realize, people fail to realize that. So, of course, they fail to realize the fact that Ali's Donuts, in case you didn't know, in case you're not from Rhode Island, it is the biggest fucking laughing stock to me of the past couple months. Last month or two, I think it was last month, shortly after the George Floyd thing, Ali's Donuts went on their Instagram and basically said this fucking this this character that I was talking about, try to imagine him. Had this whole emotional spiel about how, and it's true, cops don't do anything. That help them at least look good. They don't fucking take a stand against what's going on, right? So, this guy goes on. And it's the funniest thing because it's the whole thing that cops love donuts. So let's hit them where it hurts. Post this long, fucking juicy, nice little uh, stunt, if you will. This is another reason why. This is the the other apart from uh, aside from the fact that cancel culture never works. I think low key feel like this is a little bit of a stunt to get people to fucking. Line up and be like, yeah, go Ali. Let's go buy a bunch of donuts. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. No. Because now they're probably going to go out of business. And honestly, especially in these times, I don't wish that on anybody. But you're fucking hilarious. Goes on his Instagram and pretty much says, hey, we're taking away. The military slash the military discount, which also, I guess, included cops. We're taking away the military slash police fucking discount on our donuts. Fuck you. No more. No more fucking discounted donuts for y'all. When that shit first happened and the people were reacting to that shit, I was dead as a cop. Yeah, I understand, you know, people fucking. But there were people who weren't even cops reacting for the cops. And I was like, <laughs> okay. But I understood where they were coming from because cancel culture does nothing. As a cop, I'd be like, fuck, they took away my discount. You think a fucking cop or anybody is going to fucking be mad over a percent? I don't know what percent they give you. It's, I know it's not much. I've had a fucking, I, I dated a girl who, 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 uh, who, whose father had military discount and shit. You think a cop is going to actually be affected? Like, that's a cancel culture move right there. You think a cop's going to be affected by a fucking percentage of a thing? Yeah, he's probably going to... The cop is probably going to be like, you know what? Fuck you. I'm not going to go anymore. But it's not because he can't pull out a couple... The couple extra cents more for the fucking donut, bro. Are you stupid? So, they do that. Right? This fucking dude. Right? And then, fast forward to this month, this past week in particular, he backtracks and he says, what, it was something along the lines of, come in and, you know, we all got to stick together now. No fucking shit. That should have been your message from jump. Oh, we all got to stick together now. Let, I forget. My fucking laptop's dead. I wish I knew this shit off the top of my head. But it was basically backtracking. And he came up with a way to treat the cops with donuts now. Get the fuck out of here. You're an ass clown. Cancel culture does nothing, ladies and gentlemen. In case you didn't know, it does absolutely nothing. What Sir Dude from Ali's Donuts did was he tried to cancel the fucking cops with, and the military discount to try to hit them where it hurts. And it didn't hurt anyone but themselves. Now Ali's Donuts, as a business, is probably going to go down the drain. And I'm go- I have to laugh. You ever see that meme? My boy Ant. Shout out to Ant. 
He's been on this podcast before. He sent me the, it's the funniest meme I've seen. And it's, and it says, I have to laugh. I have to laugh at Ali's donuts. If you listen to this podcast and you think that I'm being malicious and you think that I'm being fucking a lot of, and, and I don't, and I, and I highly doubt that this is going to happen because there's a lot of people who the people on the outside don't make it any better, any better either. Because in the beginning, there were people who were mad at it, <clears throat> who, who were mad at the fact that he canceled the military discount and the, and the police. And then on the other side, there were people who were like, yeah, Ali's Donuts, take away that discount as if it does anything to the fucking cops. Hello? Get the fuck out of here. <sighs> Cancel culture does nothing. Nothing. And now you have people who those same people were like, yeah, Ali's are now like, yo, fuck Ali's. You look like clowns. And they do look like clowns. We couldn't agree more. We agree. The only difference is you thought cancel culture worked. Never does. I'm sorry. I get I get it. I get where you're coming from. But we have to realize that it doesn't fucking work. And we have to start thinking deeper and doing other shit. Not canceling and taking away discounts and shit. Allie's, you're a fuck. Dude from Allie's, who's the, the man behind the IG, you're a fuck. All right. That is it. That's been my hour of just fucking going on a whole caffeine uh, rush and then crash. Next week, we're going to have... I could at least tell you that I, I'm like almost positive next week, we're going to have a female. So It should be fun. I apologize for this very, very late edition of the Scene Vid Wednesday podcast, but I have a feeling that you guys needed this at the end of your week, whether you're listening to it on Thursday night, if I release it tonight, or Friday morning, or I would hope that you're not listening to it on the weekend. But if you are, shout out to you. You could be enjoying the weekend. Oh, Labor Day. You'll be listening to it on Monday or whatever, Tuesday, whatever. I'm rambling. This is the part of the podcast where you just shut it the fuck off. But before you do, like, subscribe, leave a, rev- leave a review. There comes the acid reflux. Like, subscribe, leave a review. Do whatever you got to do to keep this fucking plane afloat. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Jimmy Luca. This has been Seen Better Gwensa Podcast. Have a great weekend, and I will catch you on Le Flip. My name is Jimmy. Jimmy.